Hello, this is Mr. Tore, and today we're going to speak about the, the second lesson, which is And of Clay Are We Created by the author or writer Isabel Allen. So, the first thing we're going to have here will be a background on the author And of Clay Are We Created. So, it says here And of Clay Are We Created is a short story by Chilean American author Isabel Allen which appears in her 1989 collection, The Stories of Eva Luna. <clears throat> it is based on the true story of Omaira Sanchez, who was a young victim of a volcanic eruption in Colombia in 1985. The story is told from the, the perspective of Eva Luna, who was a character in one of Alan's novels. The author did not write short stories until many readers of her work expressed an interest in hearing the tales referred to by Eva Luna in Alan's eponymous novel Eva Luna. So this is a background <clears throat> on the author. This is about the author. And this is about her relation to the story of Omaira Sanchez. And this is, of course, a picture of Isabel Allen. <clears throat> the second, we're going to see the vocabulary words that we have in this lesson. The first one, the first word is catechism. <clears throat> the first one is catechism. And it's a noun. And it means an event causing severe destruction. An event causing severe destruction. And you can find this word in page 14 in your book. The second one is tenacity. And this is a noun as well. And you can find this word in page 15. And it means firm determination. The second one is tenacity. And it means a firm determination and is a noun. The second one is commiserate. And this is a verb. And you can find this word in page 16, and it means express sympathy for something or someone. The, the, the third one is commiserate, and it's in page 16. The verb, it means <coughs> express sympathy for something or someone. And the last one, oh, sorry, the fourth word is putrescent. Putrescent is an adjective, and it means rotten, bad smelling. It means rotten or bad smelling. And it is an adjective, and you can find this one in page 19. And the last one is the word periocratic, periocratic. And this is an adjective as well. You can find it in page 21, and it means having to do with administrative rules. It means having to do with administrative rules. <clears throat> so these are the vocabulary words that we have for this lesson. Next, we're going to have a summary. We're going to see a, a brief about the uh, uh, the story, and this is on the background. This is a picture of this is a real life picture of the people who were in this disaster. So it says the story opens abruptly with a starting startling line. They discover the girl's head protruding from the mud pit, eyes wide open, calling soundlessly. As soon becomes clear, the girl is 13 year old Azusuna. One of thousands of villagers who lived on the slopes of, mount, of a mountain in Latin America. A volcanic eruption has created enough heat to melt the ice on the mountain slopes, leading in turn to tremendous mudslides that have buried entire towns and killed more than 20,000 people. The narrator, who is never named, watches pictures of the devastation on the television news. Described by her lover, Rolf Calais, the first television reporter on the scene. <clears throat> Kale and his assistant film the first attempts to rescue the girl, but when volunteers are unable to throw a rope to her, he wades up to his, to his waist in the mud to tie the rope under her arms himself. He smiles a charming smile and assures her that she will soon be out. But when the volunteers begin to pull on the rope, Azusuna screams in pain. The mud has created such a strong suction around her that she cannot be pulled free. She can feel some kind of debris holding her legs. And while others suggest that it must be the rubble from her crushed house, she insists that it is the bodies of her dead brothers and sisters. <clears throat> the narrator has watched Kale countless times as he has discovered as he has covered important stories, and he has always admired his ability to be strong and detached in the face of terrible events. This time, however, she can tell by watching his eyes and hearing his voice that his objectivity is slipping and that he is responding emotionally to Azusuna. The catch in his voice is one she has never heard before, 
Abandoning his task as a reporter, Carly tries everything he can think of to get the girl free. But with no success, he manages to get a tire slipped around under his shoulders so that she will not slip down any further in the mud. <clears throat> Finally, he, he radios for a pump with which he could drain the water around the girl, but none will be available until the next day. He stays beside the girl all night, giving her sips of coffee to warm her and telling her entertaining stories of his adventures to keep her calm. Back in the city, the narrator keeps her watch, moving the to the television station so that she can see Calais satellite transmissions unedited. She phones all of the important government and business people she can think of to try to locate a pump and makes appeals on radio and television, but to no avail. Watching the screen, she feels Calais's pain and frustration and weeps for the girl. She sees that Kale has reached a kind of tiredness he has never reached before, and that he has completely forgotten the camera. <laughs> Meanwhile, the story has been picked up by other news agencies, and a crowd of reporters and cameras has surrounded Zusuna and Kale, sending pictures of the girl to millions of people around the world. A doctor briefly examines the girl, and a priest blesses her, but no one in the crowd can do anything to help her. Although the area is littered with generators and lights and wires and other technical equipment for the television crews, no one can locate a pump. As the second day closes, Azasun and Kale are still together, talking quietly and praying. Kale has run out of stories of his own and turns first to the, to the stories the narrator has told him, and then to Australian folk songs he learned as a child. While he continues to talk to the girl, he remembers the scenes from his youth that he has depressed for decades, burying bodies at, the con at a concentration camp. His father's abuse, his detarded sister's fear, his mother's humiliation. He does not share these memories with the girl, but turns them over in his mind and examines them as he has never done before. He realizes that like Ozusuna, he is trapped and that his brave adventures have been a way to escape his fear. His experience with the girl has exposed him to feelings he has pushed aside, and he is closer to her emotionally than he has never been to anyone else. On the morning of the third day, Azasuna and Kale are both cold, hungry, and exhausted. The president of the Republic comes to be filmed with the girl. He praises the girl for being an example to the nation and promises to personally send a pump. But it's too late. As she watches on the screen, the narrator can tell the precise moment when the girl and the reporter give up, hoping for a rescue. The moment that they accept the inevitability of death. For both, it is a moment of peace. They stop struggling. The narrator has managed to locate a bomb and arrange the way to ship it. But on the third night, the girl dies. Kale takes the tire away from under her arms and she slips down under the mud. The last scene of the story occurs after Calais has returned home. For some time, he has not worked, but he has watched the film of himself and Uzusuna countless times, wondering what he might have done to help her. The narrator addresses him directly, assuring him that the wounds opened by his experience with the girl will heal in time. And this is a summary of the story. And of course, here you can see pictures on the background here. The first one here, are Pictures for them. This is a picture of the medic. The second one, this is a picture for the destruction that the mudslide did. And the last one, this is a picture also for the destruction of a village around the volcano. So, this is the story. This is the story of uh, and of clay are recreated, and it's based on two events. So, the two events are what? The two events they happened in Colombia in 19. 85, November 1985. So it says here the Amir tragedy, tragedy occurred following the eruption of the Nevado de Luz Strat volcano in Tolima, Colombia on November 13, 1985. After 69 years of dormancy, the volcano's eruption caught nearby towns unaware. Even though the government has received, has received warnings from volcanological organizations to evacuate the area after the det detection of volcanic activity two months earlier. As pyroclastic flows erupted from the volcano's crater, they melted 
the mountains glaciers, sending full anonymous lahars, volcanically induced mud flows, landslides, and debris flows down its slopes at 50 kilometers per hour, 30 miles per hour. The Lahars picked up speed in gullies and engulfed the town of Almero, killing more than 20,000 of its almost 29,000 inhabitants, casualties, and other towns. Particularly, particularly Chichuna proved the overall death to 23,000 people. Footage and photographs of Omaira Sanchez, a young victim of the tragedy, were published around the world. Other photographers of the Lahars and the impact of the disaster captured attention worldwide and led to controversy over the degree to which the Colombian government was responsible for the disaster. A banner at a mass funeral in Ibag read, the volcano didn't kill 22,000 people, the government killed them. And these are the two events that really happened back in Colombia in 1985. Next part here, the next thing we have here is the themes. We have three themes in this story. The first one, fragility of life, the fearful power of nature. And this is expired, ex explained, explained clearly in the part when the volcano destroyed everything around it, when it wiped the cities around it, when it killed more than 29,000 people. So this is the fragility of life and the fearful power of nature, that the nature has the power over man and the nature, when it gets mad, it can kill people as much as it can. The second one is the determination of the human spirit. And it shows clearly in the determination of Rolf Kalle in helping and risking the girl and also in Zasuna in trying to live her life till the end, hoping that she would be rescued one day or at a moment and she would live again. The last one is the memory and the reminiscence. These are the memories that uh, Rolf Carré remembered about his childhood of his abusive father, of the bodies that he saw in the concentration camps, of his retarded sister and how his father treated her and finally his mom's emulation. So these are the themes of the story and these are the relation to the events. The next thing here we have is the setting and characters. The setting, of course, it was Colombia. Um, towns in Colombia, Almelo and so the surrounding towns of the volcano. And the characters are Ozasuna, Rolf Kalle, and Eva Luna, which is the narrator. Here and here we have a, a, a glimpse of the character, the Ozusuna. Ozusuna, whose name translated into English would be Lily, is a girl who has been buried up to her neck in a mudslide. The rest of her village has been destroyed, and she says that the bodies of her dead brothers and sisters are holding her legs. As the story opens, the girl has just been found, and a rescue effort is underway. She has also been discovered by the national news media, and soon a crowd of television reporters comes to interview her on camera. While her story is broadcast around the world, she quietly talks with Dorf Kalle, the first reporter on the scene, about her life. Although she is 13 years old, she has never traveled outside her small Latin American village, and she has never known love. She does not understand that she is being featured on, 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 inter, on international television, nor does she understand why the president of the republic himself comes to call her an example to the nation. After three days and nights trapped in the cold mud, she dies and sinks away beneath the surface of the cliff. So this is the character in the story. And this is a character, this is the real character, the real life character, Omaira Sanchez. This is the, the, the character that the story is based on. Omaira Sanchez, August 29, 1972, died on November 16, 1985 was a 13-year-old Colombian girl killed in Almero to Lima by the 1985 eruption of the Nevado de Ruiz volcano. Volcanic, volcanic debris mixed with ice to form massive lahars, volcanically induced mud flows, landslides, and debris flows which rushed into the river valleys below the mountain, killing nearly 23,000 people and destroying Almero and 13 other villages. After Lahar demolished her home, Sanchez was pinned beneath the debris of her house, where she remained trapped in water for three days. 
her blood her plight was documented <clears throat> as she descended from calmness into agony. Her courage and dignity, dignity touched the journalists and relief folks, workers who put great efforts into comforting her. After 60 hours of struggling, she died, likely as a result of either gangrene or hypothermia. Her death highlighted the failure of officials to respond correctly to the threat of the volcano contrasted with the efforts of volunteer rescue workers to reach and treat trapped victims. Despite inadequate supplies and equipment, a photograph of Sanchez taken by the photojournalist Frank Fournier shortly before the died, she died was published in news outlets around the world. It was later designated the World Press Photo of the Year for 1986. Sanchez has remained a lasting figure in popular culture remembered through music, literature, and commemorative articles. Last thing here that we have the media adaptations for this story, and it says the stories of Eva Luna, the collection from which and of clay are recreated is taken, was recorded in 1989 by Elizabeth Bia. The two cassette set was produced by Dove Audiobooks and is distributed by New Star Media. And that's what we have for this lesson. I hope you have enjoyed. Thank you so much for your time and have a good day. Goodbye.